Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 What a great honor and privilege it is once again to enter and to dwell in the presence of God. He's always in with us. Thus he's the shade upon our right hand. But we gather together, we assemble together like this. Each one taking his own place. Everyone standing in his own position. He is much the more manifest. I want to thank God for that ministration ushering in the presence of God. So we welcome you all tonight. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. Say hello to the person to your right and to your left. So you two are welcome in the name of Jesus. Into the presence of the awesome God. And tonight you're going to be edified. Tonight you're going to be encouraged. Tonight the word of exaltation will come. And you'll be lifted up. Encouraged. Exhorted. And guess what? You'll be more like Jesus. By the ministry of the spirit and the word together. In Jesus name. Amen. We also welcome all of our internet audience as you join with us this evening. You also are going to be edified in God. You also will be exhorted, encouraged, and lifted up. Amen. And you will not be the same in Jesus' name. I want to remind you all of our internet audience that wherever you are all over the world, as you're watching us, this message is being streamed live. But if for any reason you cannot watch it now or for adventure you cannot watch all of it, these messages are on YouTube. And so if you go to our website, and you key in there, you can see the different messages, and you just point or click upon the one that you want to watch and download it to your device, your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever device you happen to use, and then you're ready to go and watch these words, are these things the Lord is speaking to us. We want to thank you for joining with us and being a part of what God is doing in this house. And truly, the Lord has spoken good concerning us. And as you join with us, he will also do you great good in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll go straight into the word tonight, and I want to first of all pray and ask the Lord to help us. So as we bow down, let's take our seats very quickly. Take your seats quickly. And uh, let's make sure that we reverence the Lord and his presence in our midst tonight. What a sweet privilege and what a wonderful thing it is to have his presence here with us. Father, we come in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. We come to you by the blood of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for this great, great honor. Lord, we ask for receive a fresh cleansing from all unrighteousness that is blocking our right standing with God. And in Jesus' name, therefore, we have abundant life. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time and privilege as we come to share and to receive your word. We recognize that in ourselves alone, we cannot both deliver nor can we receive this word as we ought. For truly, it is the compressed wisdom of the almighty God. And therefore, we need your mercy. Lord, to be able to deliver as well as to receive it. And therefore, Father, I come as one of the authority of my fathers under covering, coming now to ask for fresh mercy. I strip myself willingly and completely of every confidence I might have in what I have known, what I've prepared. All of that doesn't matter now. All that matters is your mercy to cause me to be faithful, to use what I've prepared, what I know, Lord, to bring forth this word as a word in season, a word in accuracy and power, yet in the love and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord, to be precise, to be concise, not to say things unnecessary. Bringing forth out of the treasure of your word in this time of sharing things both old and new as a scribe that has been instructed unto the kingdom in the name of Jesus. I further ask as I speak, your power and your presence will fill the air, breaking every yoke, meeting every need, both spiritual, material, and circumstantial, causing, Lord, our minds to be more enlightened by the revelation knowledge of your word. Our wills to be more humble and submitted, therefore, to your will. And Lord, God, our emotions to be controlled and to be tempered even more by the power of the fruit of spirit, especially divine love in the name of Jesus. I further ask as I speak, let your power and presence fill the air so that, Lord, this word will go forth to break every yoke and meet every need in the name of Jesus. And wherever this word goes in all the earth, let your power back it so men will not be hearers but doers of all that they hear, that they will be blessed in this doing in the name of Jesus. And in particular, I now ask for mercy to humble myself under the covering of my fathers in the house. Pastor B. Mommy Sarah Johnson, I thank you for this, their covering and Lord, their prayers that have covered us in this time tonight. 
And as I begin to speak, let the Lord God may speak as an oracle of God. Let there be a free flow from you through me to your people tonight. And everyone will be imparted and impacted by the word. And as this word goes forth, there will be a river of life, a river of refreshing to all of us, myself included, but especially to them. As they drink and eat of this vine that they have planted, let them be truly abundantly satisfied with the travail of their souls in me. I thank you because you are faithful to do more. We can ask and think. We ask, pray, and receive in the wonderful, exalted name of Jesus and the people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we want to thank God, as I said, for this great honor, the privilege we have, I have in particular, to bring a word tonight. And I want to thank God for uh, the privilege and the honor done me by my fathers in the house. They're not here physically, but I know they're beholding our order by the power and the fruit of the, of the Spirit. So I acknowledge my father, Pastor Lee Johnson, and my mother in the house, darling mommy, and say thank you to them for enabling me, uh, granting me this privilege and this opportunity to bring the word tonight. And I trust that it will be a word in season, a word that will bring encouragement and enlightenment to our eyes and cause us to apprehend the fullness of what we've been called upon to do, that is apprehend the fullness of Christ in this day. This is a very short word of exhortation. Amen. Now I know you say, I've heard that one before. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Lord had mercy before, and he will have mercy again. We are bringing an exhortation, and I believe it's a word for this season. And it's so interesting that we are, well, the truth of the matter is everything that I can see, both physical and spiritual, points to the fact that we've entered a brand new season. Amen. This season has arrived. What we're believing God for is not far. You know, they have to go and bring it. It's right here, now, and present amen i don't know if you believe that the amen didn't come out but that's the fact anyway whatever you want to say about it the season has arrived folks ot wally that we always sing eh? i can't remember that particular song there's a song that talks about uh -huh. well, i do go exactly yes come on and the bible says well we'll get to that in a minute but the bible says that we should all exhort ourselves, and that's what I've come to do. So we're going to start off in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, give me verse 23. Hebrews 10 and 23, on the, ma on the screen, please. And like Pastor Lee says, double, double, amen. Ah, here we are. Now, this is the basis of what we're going to be doing today by the help of the Holy Spirit. Let us, let's read together, please. Let us hold fast. Now, us. Hang on, folks. Something's about to break forth. Amen. And say, so hold fast. Lord, let me just say, hold fast for a reason. There's a reason. Because there's going to be a shaking. Or, let me put it this way, there is a shaking going on. So to stand, you've got to hold fast. To the form of sound doctrine, the Bible says. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. <laughs> for he is faithful. That promise. Tell your neighbor, God is faithful. God is faithful. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, says that he will not allow you to be tempted above that which you but with the temptation will make a way of escape. But the essence is God is faithful, which means he's not only faithful to you, but most importantly, he's faithful to his word to perform it concerning us. Amen. So for he's faithful that promise, next verse, and let us, Consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works. Notice that love comes before good works. Amen. But the essence is we to consider one another. We take, we have, how do I put it? We have respect, we regard one another. So that as this time of shaking goes on, we will keep on provoking one another. We keep on reminding one another, keep on challenging, that's what that word there is, provoke, challenging one another to love and unto good works. And that's what I've come by the grace of God to do today. The next verse is where we're actually going, verse 25. Not forsaking, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Thank, tell you, say, thank God that is not your manner. You are not among that some. And there's an empty seat next to you. Speak to the seat. <laughs> An 
Amen. So it's not as the manner of some is, but what do we do? We exalt one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. That day is the day of the Lord. That day is the day that we are in now. That day is the time of the manifestation of the glory. Notice it's the manifestation, not the release. The pastor has taught us there's already been a release. The spirit of the spirit of measure has already been released, but all God is waiting for, amen, is a company, hallelujah, that he can manifest it through, amen. Just that company, that breaker company at the, at the, with, with the headship, that God can download that, that thing into and cause it to be made manifest in the earth, amen. And so we say, not forsaking the of ourselves, exhorting ourselves, much the more so as we see the day approaching. That's what we come to do. So, for ourselves, we're going to exhort ourselves. And even for those online, this applies to you. For those who are watching online, this applies also to you because that day is a universal day. Except that for us, in this land that the rivers be divide beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, there's a greater immediacy because by the help, by the unction, or by the, right, the design of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we are expected to bring forth the first of the first fruits of the manifestation of this glory we are expecting and the manifestation of the sons of God. Let's just put a scripture behind that. Give me Isaiah chapter 18 in verse 7. Quickly, please. Isaiah 18 in verse 7, we're talking about manifestation of the glory. That at the time, at that time, what time is that? This time. At this time shall the present a gift, an offering. Amen? That's why we call, you know, the supplies from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia to bring God an offering. Amen? So at this time shall an offering be brought to the Lord of hosts out of a people scattered and peeled from a people terrible from the beginning hitherto, a nation meted out, trodden underfoot. Now, this is the location of those people. Forget about all those adjectives. Our name is about to change. <laughs> All that scattered and peeled terribly, that's, that's about to change. That's what God is working out now. Amen? But it says, those who dwell in a nation that is meeting and trying that, whose land the rivers have spoiled, that's Odin, which means divide, to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. Now, this is in Ethiopia, it says. All right, this, be, well, if it's, this is not the scripture, but, you know, if you look earlier on, maybe verse 1 talks about, you know, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. This is in Africa. Mount Zion is in Jerusalem, where there will be a Mount Zion, spiritual Mount Zion in Africa. Amen. And out of that Mount Zion, the first saviors, without the capital S, saviors like the one of the biggest, the Lord Jesus, will arise in this day. Thank you. Thank you. Verse 1. Huh? So this is what's going on now. That's why it's more immediate, like I said, for us, but also for you online, because it's just a starter. This particular event that we're all waiting for is going to spread throughout. In fact, that's what the whole world is waiting for now. Amen? Let's get again, let's put our scripture. Romans 8, give me verse 18 or verse 19. Romans 8, 18 and 19. Hallelujah, somebody. We're setting the basis. For I reckon that the suffering... <laughs> I didn't even know this one was there. That the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. Hmm. Pastor, give us a scripture last week. Maybe we'll talk about it later on. Are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This scripture is being fulfilled as I speak. Next verse. For the earnest expectation of the creature, the creation, the whole of creation, the world, everything, even the planets, you know. The plans are waiting for you and I to go and discover them. Everybody said, everybody was silent, Pastor G. We won't get into that today. But one day, I was reading this morning, Pastor Wally, and they said that one guy wants to send a, 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 an expedition to Mars. And the only qualification, well, apart from money, is you have to be ready to die. <laughs> because you may get there, but there's no guarantee, there's zero guarantee you're coming back. Can you imagine? Someone asked, the lady, the lady on the screen asked, what is the price of death? A couple of million dollars. So you have to pay to go and die. <laughs> but we will do it, and we won't die. We'll go and we'll come back by the Spirit without measure. You wait and see. For the honest expectation of the creature, wait at 
for the manifestation of the sons of God. Next verse, give me verse 21. 21, 21. Because the creature itself or creation itself shall also be delivered from the body of corruption into the glorious liberty. Hallelujah. That is where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The glorious liberty of the sons of God. So, this is what we're waiting for, and this is the season we are about to enter. And like I said, all the portents, all the signs, physical and spiritual, are lying. There's some other things the Lord showed me. And this message, I believe, came to be yesterday as I was, you know, here we were praying for Nigeria. And the Lord had us bring a song, which we sung many, many times. Amen. Now the winter is past. And the spring, and it was looking, which we, I mean, not this was to hear. I mean, of course, the air condition was on, but that was not what we were talking about. You know, everyone was looking so glum. So I was like, come on, guys, you know, praise God. You know, there's more to this thing. This is a prophetic song that Papa Verna, Kelly Verna, gave us way back, way back. And that song is about to be fulfilled now. The winter is past, folks. The springtime has come. The fig tree is going to bud. Hello, the fig tree has budded. <laughs> and so we're singing this thing, and it was like being heavy and heavy and heavy. No, folks, folks, brethren, don't feel heavy. Don't be heavy. This is not a time to be heavy. Thank God for that word Pastor Andrew brought. I mean, he was singing on Sunday. Garment of praise. We should be praising God because what is coming is so tremendous. But you see, what the devil is, he's using circumstances to cover it. So instead of rejoicing with praise and giving glory to God and thanking God recklessly, like I saw Sister Lighton doing early on, you know? That's the attitude we need to have. Amen? Mommy also spoke two Sundays ago about the Shunammite woman who had a confession, a testimony, in spite and despite what had happened. Her son had died. Guess when it happened? Mommy said it was at the time of the, of the harvest. Let's go there. Second Kings, I think it's chapter two or chapter four. I think I wrote it down. Yeah, okay. Second Kings chapter four. Mm. Start from verse 17. Hello, son. Thank you. The winter's passed. We'll get to that in a minute. And the woman conceived and bare a son that you know, Elisha, the one she was the Bible says she was a great woman, she was very influential. And she didn't have a child, and the, they were all the while she and her husband kept on looking after the prophet anytime the prophet Elisha passes by. They were housing, they were clothing, they were feeding. So after a while, you know, probably said, oh, what can I do for this one? Ask Gazi. And Gazi, well, she doesn't have a child. So the prophet prophesied. And when prophets, real prophets prophesy, it always comes to pass. Amen. Thank God we have real prophets in this house. Huh, one amen. I said, thank God. We have real prophets in this. You know what that tells you? That means that when they speak concerning your life, it will come to pass. I don't know about you, but my own life, oh, the words that have been spoken by pastor and mommy to my, they are coming to pass. They have come to pass, and they will yet come to pass. We will see that glory. Ah, if you don't believe that, then don't say amen. This amen is not going to be a problem tonight, is it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. No ambiguity. That's a true prophet speaking. I said, nay, my Lord, don't lie to your heart. He said, can we see your people? He's just like you just now. When I said everything he spoke, just a few amens, a week came in here and there. No, don't disbelieve. The prophet speaks. Accept, receive it, and, you know, work assiduously to it. Amen? Next verse. Thank you. That's our amen. Next verse. <laughs> and the woman conceived by a son, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, next verse. Where it talks about, yeah. Okay, now look what it says. This was, now the child was grown up. It fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. What were the reapers doing? They were bringing the harvest. The fruit was coming in. The income of the year was about to come in and it was going to be a time of celebration, a time of rejoicing, a time when, you know. And he said, found my head, my head. And he said, carry to the light, carry him to his mother. Go back to that first 18, let me see. Go back one verse. No, the verse before that. Yeah. Aha. Okay, he was growing. He fell on that. He went to his father's reapers. Yeah, this is what I want to say. So, went to three, and then after that, they sent him back to his mother 
and it was on his mother's lap, and this child died. But the woman refused to accept because the prophet had spoken. Anytime any manifestation contrary to what the Lord has spoken concerning you in the word and what the prophets of God has spoken concerning you comes, you reject it. And this was when she went looking for the prophet. And all the while had it was, it is well. It is well. It is well. They asked her, you know, where are you going? It is well. The moment I said, uh, Elisha saw, he said, this is that woman. Is it okay? He said, it is well. And we're not, to cut a long story short, in that time of harvest, this great tribulation, this great trial came to take her most precious and prized possession or, you know, gift from God. Hello, somebody. The devil is not going to allow us to just waltz in. Pastor said that many times. There will be contention. That's why you and I have to contend for the faith because there's always going to be, it's not a curse. It's not a negative con uh, confession. In fact, it's a positive one because it's part of the word of the Lord. Through much tribulation, the Bible says, amen? You will enter in. Okay, so we see this. So even the season of the harvest, there will be trials and temptations. But we got to keep our focus upon the promise of the word that will bring forth his son. The Bible says, this one conceived and brought forth a son. You two will conceive. Let me reverse that. You have conceived. And you are going to bring up forth the Son of God with power and glory in Jesus' name. The Bible says the Spirit will overshadow us like it did Mary. And that holy thing that shall be born of us, born of us, manifested of us, shall be known as the Son of God. But this time, not as a child, not as a baby, but as a, the Lord with glory. Amen. Now, but before this happens, there will be distress. Give me First Peter chapter 1. Let's start to read from verse 3. This is where we are now. By the mercy of God, we will, trans we will go over it. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Did I say 15? No. First Peter 1, verse 3. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be, let's read together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again, hath been born again, Unto a living hope, living hope, what hope? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That hope is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Pastor went through this. So I'm just reading it. So let's go next verse. I'm just, you know, reiterating it. Now, this is what we are born to. To an inheritance. Come on, guys. To an inheritance. How many people have an inheritance here? I am born by the power of the Spirit unto an inheritance in Christ Jesus, that is incorruptible, that is undefiled, that fadeth not away. It is reserved for me. My inheritance is reserved for me and for me only. Amen. And by the power of the Spirit, you'll apprehend it in Jesus' name. That's why we're exhorting unto one another. These are things that should speak to you in this season. Amen. These are scriptures that we should be speaking to us. Next verse. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept. Oh, I love this. By the power of God. How many people believe they are kept by the power of God? And whether you believe it or not, this is a fact. This is the word of the Lord. The Bible says you are kept by the power of God through faith. Now, that's your part. Hello? Through faith. Unto salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. That time has come. So all this, this is the setting. This is what is imminent. This is the season we have now entered into. It is something that is reserved for you. This inheritance. Nobody can take yours. You cannot take my own. I cannot take your own. You are the only one who can apprehend your own. And I'm the only one who can apprehend my own portion. Everybody is catered for. And he says it's reserved for you. It's not going anywhere. Can you imagine, Pastor Wally, when we get to heaven, we see the mantles of all those who didn't make it. Reserved. Nobody came to claim it. God forbid. To fear. Sister Ruda. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me. <laughs> no. It's really, it, nobody can touch it. It's there for you. It's there for me. So why don't you make up your mind that no matter what happens, tell your neighbor, no matter what happens, 
I will get that inheritance. I will collect my portion of his spirit without measure. Nothing, no temptation, no trial will hinder me. No man, no devil. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hello, somebody. We're exalting ourselves. Now, this is it. Now, let's go to verse 6. Now, this is the other side. Wherein, wherein, I mean, in this, in this knowledge, this knowledge of this inheritance, ye greatly rejoice. Happy by rejoicing in Jesus' name. <laughs> I said, that's not a rejoicing. Say hallelujah. How many people are rejoicing in Jesus' name? Rejoicing in this portion of your inheritance. Amen. We need to understand what God has done, folks. God has made you as much like him potentially as you can be, as he can be. Hello, somebody. But I say, you're God's. And all of you are children of the most high. Which child does not resemble his father? Hello, somebody. Man, that, that is an awesome privilege. That a man should be made like unto God. After his own kind. He says, where well, you can rejoice, though now. Now, this is where we are. This is the season. Amen. But don't worry. We're in, we're in good hands. Amen. That says you are kept by the power of God. But if this is a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Yes. There will be temptations. Amen. That word heaviness is another word for distressed. So there's a distress going on. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, Lord. You see, this distress is not to destruction. It will stretch you, but it will not destroy. Amen. We read it the other day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8 thereabouts. Yes, verse 8. Pastor was teaching him the other day. And he talks about, talks about the 7th chapter 4. Hallelujah, somebody. Verse 8. Yeah. He says, we are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. Always. Now, this is the essence of what's going on now. Always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered to death for the Lord Jesus' sake, that the life also might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. And verse 17 says, for our light affliction. I love that. For our light affliction, is, which is but for a moment. You know what he's doing? He's comparing the strains you have to go through, the things of constriction you have to go through now to the eternity that is coming when you'll be fully manifest as the glory, with the glory of God. He said it's for a moment. What's 10 years in a billion? That's just like a second. 10 years in 10 billion. 20 years. It's not even 20. Hello? The it's, a, it's a negligible part. It says it's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. Why we say this to give you an understanding that even what, despite of whatever it is is going on in your life right now, that you can't understand, we are going to be victorious. Hello, somebody. This is what Pastor Spiritual is talking about, the Savior's rising from Mount Zion, the tears, you know. He was telling us that life is being made manifest in our, death is made manifest, but life, in, we, as we pray and intercede, we're giving more and more of the life that we draw to the saints of God and what God is trying to do in the earth, you know, among the, the, the sons of men, bringing many men, like all these wonderful children that God has given us in this house. We'll talk about that later. All that generation of life, that life that you're using to, you know, do your own body, <laughs> so to speak. That you're drawing for yourself. God is using that life to effect changes and things in the lives of other people. Amen? So the life that you draw for yourself as you release it in prayer is going to work for others. That's why you seem to quote unquote have a life deficit. That's why all those temptations and trials and weaknesses are coming but you're going to be delivered. Amen? The time has come and you are, thank you Pastor Ibrahim, you are delivered, you are being delivered and you will be delivered. Amen? But yes, it says, we know that this light affliction is working for us a mighty weight of glory, even though we have manifold temptation now. Amen? 
We're just going through. It's just a process to take us where God wants us to be. Now, it says a trial of your faith. Go back to First Peter quickly. Trial of your faith. We'll get to where we're going in a minute. First Peter chapter 1 verse 7. Thank you. <laughs> that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, <laughs> will be found unto praise and honor and glory at this appearing. I'm being particular now, Pastor Ibrahim. Will be found at this appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Appearing where? In us, in his church, in glory. Amen. This particular appearing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Pastor was preaching on personally fulfilling the Feast of Tabernacles. And he said when he was, if you read that rhema, <laughs> boy, there's so much in that rhema. It's, it's almost, it's very difficult to summarize, but let's see what we can do. So he showed that we're now in the year and the season. Hold on to that word season. Amen. We're going to get back to it. Of the fulfillment of the fullness of the Feast of Tabernacles in the church. Amen. We've experienced Passover. And incidentally, you know, that Tabernacles this year is next month. 19th of October to the 23rd. I actually went to Google it. 19 to 23. Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, begins on the 3rd of October and just flows all the way down until then. So we're right, folks, we are right on the cusp. And if I know God, I, I mean, I just believe, I just believe that something is about to break forth. Amen? That tabernacles, anyway, let me just keep it that light. We've experienced Passover, the born again, uh, New birth, we experience and continue to experience Pentecost. We do not do away with the former feast. For example, we don't stop getting people born again. Now that we stop talking in tongues and, you know, all the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all these things, but we must fullness, experience the fullness now of tabernacles. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you said the Feast of Tabernacles was three sub feasts. First of all, the the blowing of trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets, which signifies a prophetic voice. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Amen. Also, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, talks about you know, the voice as a trumpet, Lord, like a trumpet going forth. So that's what it's like. We pray in tongues. We experience this individually as we pray in tongues. So we receive the revelation of the Christ life and begin to walk in it. Amen. The Bible says that, uh, yeah, that's it. And that talks about personal uh Revelation of the Christ life, yeah. Then the second day is a day of atonement, which represents the removal of the sin nature out from our souls and our bodies as we use the blood, the word, and the spirit to perfect the love of God. The Bible says, you know, having therefore these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Doing what? Perfecting holiness in the field of God. We've done this and we're doing this to a degree. We haven't received the fullness of it. That's where we're going, but it's going on as we speak right now. So far, we've experienced trumpets and the day of atonement in limited degree. But now, now we're about to enter into the fullness of tabernacles. Amen? And why is that? Like I said, there's signs in the heavens, signs in the physical. We we'll talk about heavenly ones first. How many of you remember, of course, that we had the four blood moon tetrad, which synchronized with the Jewish feast of Pentecost and the Jewish feast of, uh, of, uh, of Passover and Pentecost, and now synchronizes with the Jewish feast of Tabernacles. Not only that, for the past one year, since September last year, we've entered into a Shemitah, the seventh year of Jubilee, a Shemitah year. So right now, in this month of September, we are about to conclude that single year of release. Now, the thing about prophetic types, because it's a shadow, you know, a shadow can be elongated or it can be cut short, depending on what time of day it is. If the sun is ahead, it's shortened. If the sun is going down towards the end of the day, you can see the shadow being elongated. So there is a variation. There's no exact principle. So that's why it's days. It's a time or a season. Amen. So we're in a season now when that Shemitah year has to be fulfilled. And not only that, the Feast of Tabernacles is about to begin with the blowing of trumpets. So we can see we're right on the cusp of something marvelously, marvelously, I don't want to use the fanta, you know, uh, marvelously, it keeps coming back. Because you see, the thing about it is that when you think about it, it it's, it's very difficult just with the ordinary human mind to comprehend what God is about to do. God is about to unload the fullness of the Spirit without measure 
upon certain people in his church that he has prepared. We'll see that in a minute. And then that, allow that anointing to flow from them to the rest of the body so that just like the Lord Jesus' disciples did miracles, signs, and wonders under his authority, so also we will be doing under the authority of our fathers who have been prepared. And those miracles are not going to be small, tiny miracles. They'll be different degrees. But believe you me, the world will know that something has happened. That's why the whole world is waiting for this. Now, so the fullness of tabernacles is imminent because of the blood moon tetrad synchronized with the feast of Passover and tabernacles and the year of release. Now, what's the point of all this? Pastor, we get consoled. Okay, all right, all right. The most important thing we want to let us know is that this first of the first fruits that is imminent of the spirit that measure is in this land, Nigeria. And that's why all the tribulation is going on. All the trials, all the temptings, all the stuff that's going on in our polity, amen. <laughs> but as I was singing yesterday, I, we were singing yesterday, I believe the Lord asked me to tell us that the words that, of that song from the scripture that was taken for, from Songs chapter 2, verse 11, the Lord says, it's about to come to pass now, and it is coming to pass. We are truly going to see a reversal of the fortune now. It's already in process, but that word is now come to pass. And truly a season of fruitfulness has come upon our land. Now don't be worried. Don't worry. It doesn't look like it. Hello, somebody. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't, in fact, if anything, it's the exact opposite. But as we were singing yesterday, Lord was saying, this song, I think it was when Papa Kelly came, 2008, or when did he come? 2004. Thank you, 2004. So how many years is that now? That's 12 years, number of government prophesied that i never forgot because he came that morning he said the church was about singing and we had i had never read that scripture before well i'd read it but you know you just read scripture you just pass over it so what happened <laughs> and i was just really i just out of curiosity i just went and looked at the meaning of that verse 13 i just you know let me just find out what exactly because i believe the lord spoke to me and i just discovered several different translations, different traditions of the same thing, but they, they, let me just give you just a one or two. There's so many, but they all come to the same conclusion. First of all, I looked at one of the translations and this is the International Standard Version. And it called, now, first of all, let's read it. Songs, give me Songs chapter 2 verse 11. Songs 2 verse 11. Thank you. For lo, lo, that is calling your attention. Lo, look, look, see, observe. The winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. And the voice of the turtle, the turtle does, is heard in our land. Next verse. Next verse. Now, this is where it begins to concern us. The fig tree puts forth her green figs. And the vines, notice the fig tree is different from the vine. Hello? Hello? Put on your prophetic caps now. Feel your head like this and say, is my prophetic cap? Is this it insecure? Okay, what to, what to do? Okay, all right. Let's start again. The fig tree puts out forth her green figs and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. <laughs> That's a fragrance. And then what do you all say? What's the next word? Do what? Come on, guys. Do what? Arise. My love, my fair one, and come away. So there's a sequence of events here. Two things must happen before we arise. The fig tree must put forth her green figs, and the vines <laughs> with a tender. It is this Bible. I fear this Bible. Let's read what this now. So I went and checked out and looked at these in different translations. The fig tree, as we all know or should know, a fig tree is a type of the church spiritual Israel. I mean, sometimes, many times in the Bible, the fig trees used to represent Israel, like in Matthew chapter 24. You know, the fig tree and all the leaves, and you know, when the fig tree pours, brings forth her fruit. So talk about Israel, we won't go into that. But the essence is that the fig tree produces its, this is what it says, the fig tree has produced its ripe fruit. So in other words, this fig tree, see, when I saw green figs, I thought, ah, it must be the one that has not ripened at all. So it is, he's just putting forth fruit. But no, he's not, he's not talking about fruit. They're just growing. He's talking about ripe fruit. Fruit that 
you, fruit that is mature. The fig tree must bring forth mature fruit in this land. Because this is the first of the first fruits of this scripture being fulfilled. Amen. So the fig tree has bring forth mature fruit at two levels. Not only the first level is must bring forth mature spiritual fathers. Hello. You know something? I discovered some things are very interesting, uh, you know, fruits. You know, a fig tree can never mature if you take it off the tree. A fig can never mature. Once you remove it from the tree, it's useless. It must stay <laughs> on the tree until it is mature. You must stay on the tree until you mature. It is... <laughs> It is the tree that gives the fig tree, that the fig on the tree, its juice and all the resources to mature it. So thank you. The nourishment to make it mature. Once that fig tree is removed, or it removes itself, it cannot mature again. And it's useless. So but the one that is ripe, and there's some there are different varieties, but there's a particular one that I, <laughs> let me show the picture. That God is great. There's a particular one there that when it is ripe, it is green. So you won't even know. Some of them, they change color. They're different varieties. But there's a particular variety that when it is ripe, it is still green. So it is mature and it is green. I ah, say, Lord, you're wonderful. And it cannot mature once it's not, once you move from the tree. That's why you should never approach yourself when, you, when God plants you somewhere. Because there's a reason why he's put you there. Don't move around. There's only one tree. God is not like man. He doesn't make, if he plants you and plugs you in somewhere, he has a reason for your being there. Unless he himself uproots you and says, now is the time. Like, for example, when he will, he will call out all those people out from Babylon because there's another tree he wants to graft them into. That's coming to you. We see here, the fig tree produces fruit. Amen? And it brings forth the fruit. Now it says, and the vines, now, the fig tree is not the vine. The literal translation of the vine is like, you know, well, let me read the second translation. Another translation, the fig tree has ripened her green figs and the sweet-smelling vines have given forth fragrance. Rise, come, my beloved friend, my fair one, come away. So, we see here, this is a translation, this translation suggests that this, all this is going to happen in the season of the turtle dove singing over Nigeria. The turtle doves, they represent God's love. Amen? Because the, the turtle doves are two doves that are mating. Amen? So it talks about the love of God for Nigeria. And we see that in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Quickly. Zephaniah 3, 17. Zephaniah 3, 17. We're coming back to this, so keep it. Zephaniah 3, 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is what? Mighty. He will save. These are things that God says he will do. He will save. He will rejoice over the joy. He will rest in his love. And he will joy over Nigeria with singing. This is being fulfilled as I speak. Don't worry about what you see. God is in control in Nigeria. Tell your neighbor, God is in control. So, in this season of the turtle dove singing over Nigeria, the church Christians represented by the fig tree will bring forth mature fruit. One, spiritual fathers who provide covering. Isaiah 32, 1. And a king shall reign, and princes shall rule in judgment, and a man. That man there represents maturity. We should hear, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. Next verse. And a man, are we reading together? Shall be as a hiding place from the wind, as a covering from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Hello, somebody. This thing we're talking about cannot happen except fathers come forth. So that's the first order of the day. And by the grace of God, we see that fulfilled, at least in this church. I'm sure there are others. We just don't know them yet. God knows it has a 7,000 have not bowed. All that matters is that they be in the place beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that the rivers divide. Amen. We'll find out later. It's going to happen. Before our very eyes, you'll see them and you'll know each other. Like that guy in Mark chapter 9. They didn't know him. Just he was not with them. But he brought forth the glory anyway. He brought forth the miracles. Amen. So, amen, there must be mature fathers. 
We also see that in Psalms 133, where the Bible says the anointing comes upon the head and it runs down the beard. The beard there re represents maturity. So there must be a mature cater of fathers who bring forth this fruit first. Amen? Mature fruit. And then also there's a mature fruit of the spirit of the, uh, of the spirit, the character of the Lord Jesus Christ, love perfected. So these fathers that come forth must have perfected a fruit of love or to a very, very great degree and are perfecting it. Amen? So this is one of the key signs. Give me John chapter 15, um, verse, I think verse 8, where it talks about the fruit. Now you go for the bring for, yeah, this is it. Herein is my father glorified. How many do you want to glorify the father? Amen. That you bear a little fruit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that we said, I think it was on Sunday we were preaching about those who emphasize gifts over fruit. You know, <laughs> the season of Pentecost, folks, is still there, but that's not the emphasis now. God's emphasis is on fruit. And it's that fruit, incidentally, that we bear in abundance that makes us his disciples. He's already told us what makes us. He says, so shall ye be my disciples. In other words, the degree, the degree to which you are able to bear fruit, the fruit of love in particular, but all, love is a composite fruit. Love is love. And the fruit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness. Amen? The degree to which we bear that fruit is the degree to which we are the disciples of God. And yet there's a whole army of tears. I haven't even begun to see this. They're still worried about gifts and prosperity. I believe in gifts. I believe in prosperity. But that is not the emphasis. That, those are not the greater, weightier matters of the law now. We'll do all that, but these will not leave undone. Fruit. Abundant fruit. Amen. So the fruit must be at two levels. Mature fruit, spiritual fathers who provide covering, and then fruit of the spirit, the character of Christ reproduced, not only in these spiritual fathers, but also in those who are underneath them. So that as they produce the character, those under them too will feed off the character. The anointing comes from the head and flows to the body. Amen. Now, let's go to look at the vine quickly. Vine. Let's go back to West, um, verse 11. Songs chapter 2, verse 11. The vine. Uh, no, it says the vine. Next verse. Yeah. All right. It says the fig tree. So we understand the fig tree puts forth mature figs. Right? Now it says, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Thank God for that. <laughs> so who's the vine? Another vine. Vine is another type of the church. But he's talking about a different aspect now. And the two of them must go in consonance one with the other. Give me Isaiah chapter 5 verse 7 quickly. Just keep your finger on this. We'll come back to this. Isaiah 5, 7. So for the vineyard of the Lord is what? <sighs> the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel and the men of Judah. Why Judah? Why not the whole of Israel? Judah was the first tribe that believed in David. <laughs> Judah was the first place. Hebron is in Judah. That was the first place. And David went to rule. Hello, somebody. And the man of Judah is present plant. Amen. The essence is the vine represents Israel at another level. Now, he says the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And Jesus himself said, I am the what? The true vine, which means they're false vines. So we need to be careful. But the essence is this. In Songs of Solomon, these vines, hello, help me, Lord, bring forth tender grapes. Now, those grapes are they first of all start as blossoms. That's where the fragrance comes from. And over a while of time, they develop and become grapes that are very tiny, very small. But the beginning is as a blossom. And when that blossom is on the vine, it gives a beautiful fragrance. What is the blossom? What is the grape? We know the grape is fruit. Abi, what is he talking about? The grapes or the blossoms... They are not yet edible like the mature figs. But they are upon the vine. Now, what this is something about the vine that the Lord showed me. A vine lies on the ground, except it is lifted up and it is supported. So, for a vine 
to grow and bear these blossoms, it cannot just be a fresh vine that's just sprouting out of the ground. It has to be a vine that is already mature and is already standing upright. Otherwise, those blossoms, one, they will not develop in good in full measure. And even those that do, that, that do develop can be eaten and taken away by the animals that run underneath the vine. What are you saying, Pastor? Boy, God. The little foxes, thank you. So when we get away from the little foxes, you got to lift the vine up and bring it support. <laughs> what are you, Pastor Wigger, what are you saying? It's all prophet. Your prophet caps on. What is the what are the grapes on the and the blossoms on the vine? And this is one really blew my mind. These are young Christian converts. The dew of the morning. God, God, God is great. These are young Christians who are still immature. But they've been brought and they've been grafted into the vine. But that's not a creeping vine. It's a vine that has been lifted up that has begun to produce support. Has, it's a support. So when these children come, they come in large numbers. And as they come, they appear on the vine, and their fragrance attracts even more. The Bible talks about the sweet fragrance of Christ. Amen. I'm, I'm not sure. There's someone in Corinthians. But the essence is, they come not in little. They come because, oh, shaka, because the vine is not creeping on the ground. It's not earth-based. The vine has a support. The true vine says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. But you see, the branches are grafted in to the vine that is upright, the true vine. And so the vine flourishes. And as it flourishes, the blossoms come and the little grapes come. And they come in large numbers because you have a vine that is standing. I don't know if you get what I'm saying, but this place is a vine. By the mercy and grace of God. This vine has been growing for years, more than 30 years. I've been with me about 30, but more than 30 years. And it is now standing strong. Upright, unshakable, unbendable, <laughs> like the true vine. <laughs> and then God is bringing blossoms to come and put on that vine. To decorate, and he's not bringing one or two. He's bringing them in large numbers, multitudes. The Lord is lifting up a stand to the Gentiles, setting up a standard to the people, and they're bringing the sons and daughters from near and from afar. We see it happening before our very eyes. Last Sunday, I came out. I, I in fact, Pastor Wally, I was intimidated when I came out. I saw. Zion City Fellowship. <laughs> God gave me another an analogy. Remember when David was about to be crowned? He was still in the wilderness. And they came to him from everywhere. But he was like the, the sand. And the, 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 the number of them was filled the whole land. And they are still coming. And they will still continue to come. Because it's the Lord that's doing it. I was intimidated when I stepped out of that room at 5 o'clock to go and the place was full. <laughs> I had to just quickly bounce out of that place and go all the way around. No one I would have gone you know, through this place, but their numbers were like, wow. Then when I f came down during a, you know, the prayer, I saw that no, that was two Sundays ago, two Sundays ago. This place was full, and they're still coming. Now you may say, well, maybe because they keep, no, 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 no. Then the thing that convinces me is the order. God bless you, Pastor Lolly. Something is happening. Pastor Praise. The order, he's not here tonight, but God bless you. The thing that come was the order. No noise. Oh. I said, these are young folks. None of them is doing gra -ga 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 -ga. They're all walking out one by one. Walking out one by one. They're not, they're not make and it's just begun. So what are we saying? <laughs> so what? Pastor Wally says something. What am I saying? So these ones come, they are not yet edible, 
The Lord Jesus cannot yet eat them, but he's going to keep them on this vine. He's going to nourish them here. He's going to support them here until they mature. And then God will make them into new wine. And then they will go and spread their vintage all over the earth. I remember telling him, I think it was praise. I can't remember if it was praise or my son. I was telling him. Him. I said, you know, the, the thing that's going to happen is that just like that man in Mark chapter 9, who was not with the main body of disciples, but he was a silent disciple. When the glory breaks out and it's coming, see, these are the things that must happen before we see that manifestation. And we're already seeing it. Clearly, no ambiguity. That's why I say, folks, don't worry. It is well with Nigeria. It is well with you in Nigeria. It is well. No hassle. No hassle. If you know the signs of the times and seasons, you will be rejoicing. Because now is your salvation nearer than when we first began. It's so near. Yay! Even at the door. So look at that in a minute. Amen. But the essence is, when that glory comes, it comes from the head down to the skirts of his garment. That implies there's a hierarchy. So these youths are at the skirts. But when the glory comes, they will receive a part of that glory because they are a part of the vine. They are stuck into the vine. Jesus said, except you abide in the vine, you cannot do anything. But if you abide, you will bring forth much fruit. So this is it. Young Christian converts who are the fruit of the vine that has been grafted into Christ for support, and they're growing upright in Christ, and they will bear much fruit. Amen. So I make bold to say that these are the youths that God has given us. I, well, thank you. Isaiah 49, I was going to mention that too. Isaiah 49, who had gotten me all these, seeing I had lost the other? Where were all these? Those ones are cleared out. So that these ones could come in. <laughs> Simple. They did not want to remain grafted in. And so they uprooted themselves. Ah, fine. I said, now, look up. I want to bring you sons and daughters. You never knew they were there. They are there. All over. And they're not just the ones that we can see here. All over the world, folks. All over the nations of the earth. You will not be able to count them. And guess what? The Bible says, I and the children that the Lord has given me. They are for signs and for wonders in the land of Israel. When that anointing hits, people you have no idea about are doing miracles, signs and wonders all over the face of the earth because there's a vine in the land beyond, or there are vines, let me just say one, land, vines beyond the land, in the land beyond the rivers of Ethiopia where the rivers divide. And it's going to be reproduced all over the earth. Once that glory hits, bam, Everybody will know that, whoa, something's going on. We're in that time now. So, folks, don't worry. God is in control, firmly in control. So, this is it. Now, so, yeah, this is it. We have this witness. First, now, the fig tree bringing forth his mature fruit, mature or maturing. Spiritual fathers as kings, princes that rule, amen. Mature fruit of the spirit also, love being perfected. And then we have the second witness. I was in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. The second witness is the vine that brings forth his tender blossom, tender fruits, amen, and the sweet fragrance of Christ. And all this synchronized with the tetrad, four blood moon tetrad, has been synchronized with the feast of Passover, with the feast of, Tal of uh, Pentecost, and now we're about to enter into tabernacles proper at this time. We also see the witness in the earth, the distress among nations. Matthew 21, 25. I want to see something here. In Matthew 21, 25. Matthew 21, 25. Very important. No, no. Luke, sorry. I said Matthew. Luke, forgive me. Luke, Luke, Luke. Thank you for being double-double, but I gave you the wrong scripture. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. <laughs> oh, let me not get off that. And in the stars... And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, the humanity roaring. Next verse. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. You don't want to remain on earth when these things come. 
Now we're being on earth physically. I'm talking about spiritually now. Spiritual earth. Amen. Set your affection on things above. Where God dwelleth. Mortify your deeds, your members that are upon the earth. So the earth has no pull on you. Let your perspective be up, not down. Amen. Looking after those which are coming, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now skip verse 27 and give me verse, uh, okay, give me verse 27. Verse 27. Then I shall see the Son of Man come in a cloud, the power and great glory. Okay, this is the apostolic cloud of when this begins to come, now look at this. So when these things become, begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up, we preach this on Sunday, look up, lift up your head for your redemption, redemption of the purchased possession. Ephesians. The redemption of the purchased possession. That is a church. God purchased with his life and his blood. And God says he's going to redeem that church when all these things begin to come to pass. So lift up your head, folks. Your time has come. <laughs> For your redemption draweth nigh. Next verse. Oh, glory to God. And then he spake them in power. We're talking about the fig tree. So you come back to the fig tree now. He said, behold the fig tree and all the trees. Next verse is where I think I'm going. Yeah. When they now shoot forth, been talking about that bringing forth mature fruit and fathers see you see i know yourself that summer is not only full this summer summer is after spring hello somebody it starts in spring pastor wally when is spring when is the spring equal? is it not april or march spring april when is zion city fellowship start the spring time we see, we're now transiting into summer. April, May, June, July, August, September. That's six months. <laughs> We've passed oil of myrrh. We're now about to step into sweet odors. Summer is now nigh at hand. Hello, summer. I can't, I can't <laughs> let me get it clearer than that. Amen? Oh, Lord have mercy. Beloved, the manifestation of the kingdom. Next verse, give me that. Next verse. Yeah, verse 31. Thank you. So likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that, what? The kingdom of God is nigh at hand. The kingdom of God is the dominion of the king, righteousness, peace, and joy. Perfected love over our minds, wills, emotions, and yes, flesh also. That is about to take place. And Tabernacle is October 19 to 20. Something's going to happen, folks. I'm, I'm just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. When we say it's the time of the harvest, I didn't understand. But now I'm beginning to see what God said. You know, prophets just speak and, you know, you have to pick it up. I didn't understand. I, didn't, I had no clue what she was talking about. I understand now. I'm beginning to understand. God will give me, you also understand in Jesus' name. So, why all this? As I said early on, now is our salvation nearer than when we first began. And in verse 14 of that passage, they won't go there because of time. It says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make ye no occasion. Okay, let's read it. Um, let's see now. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Folks, everything we're waiting for is at hand. It says, and that knowing the time, how many people know the times? We just talked about the times and seasons now. So we know us is, none of us is in any darkness now. I said we should not be in darkness, but that day shall not come. We should not be in darkness. We should know perfectly well the time. That now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Next verse. See what it says. The night is far spent, the days of hand. Let us, wealth, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. That's the armor of love. Amen? Light, life, and love. Same thing. All right, next verse. And let us walk honestly as in the day, not right. Blah, 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 blah. Next verse. Not in strife and envy. Him that is weak. Let's, let's go. Huh? All these are things we must do. Now, this is where I'm going. Say, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. 
And I thought, the Lord gave me these words after this. This is why this is a real word. I believe the Lord had to say. Give it to me again. Galatians chapter 6 in verse 7. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord, folks. <laughs> there you go. Be not deceived. Pastor taught us that one of the great, great weapons of the enemy in the end time is deception. You need to be careful. Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So when you sow, sow the right seed, fruit in your heart, the thoughts of your heart, meditations, everything. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But the essence is this. God is not mocked, be not deceived. Next verse. God is not mocked, be not Next verse, please. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he, now this is it, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting, abundant life. What he says is that you need to sow to your spirit. Forget the things of the flesh. The flesh lost against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. But these two are the contrary one to the other. It says, but walk in the spirit so that you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Crucify thy flesh by the power of the word, the blood, and the spirit. And perfect that holiness. And this is, this, is what, this is what the Lord is saying here. The Bible says in verse 9, <laughs> and this is the word that I make. Let us not be weary. You see, it was that weariness I saw yesterday. I really sparked off this message. It was like, and it's so interesting, the same thing happened on Saturday. Was it two Saturdays ago when my mommy, you know, brought that word for us? I said, ah, this thing, don't, don't let the, don't let, not, let, not, don't let the devil wear you out. This is not a time to be ready. This is a time to rejoice. This is a time to be glad. Thank God for that word, pa, 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 that song Pastor Andrew uh, gave us on Sunday, you know. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Don't allow the devil to wear you out. Lift. As well as good everybody. Lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees. The Bible says you will reap if you faint not. How many want to reap in this day? Reap the fruit of your doings. Reap the fruit of the earth. Reap the fruit of all these words and all this prayer and everything we're doing all this time. The season has come. The season has come. The season is now. You will reap if you don't faint or allow yourself to weep. The Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Your strength will not accomplish it, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no occasion for the flesh or anything else. Folks, it's coming for a triumphant church. Oh. Not coming for a church that is weak and weary. <laughs> you will not be weak, you will not be weary. You're not weak, you're not weary in Jesus' name. I'm not weak, I'm not weary. But tell me, let me tell you, it's coming for a triumphant church. A church that, oh, though the fig tree does not blossom, though there's, there's no, no scarf in the stalls, say, yet will I glory in the God of my salvation. Yet will I rejoice. You're not rejoicing because of what is, but because of who he is. And it doesn't matter what is. It doesn't matter how you feel. I will praise the Lord at all times. Folks, it's an attitude. There's just no another way to it's an attitude. But you see, the reason why I've gone through all this is to show you that the time and the season is close and it is near. And you need to remember that he said, Don't let your hands hang down. Confirm the feeble knees. Hello, somebody. Give me Hebrews 10 35. Glory to God. We're closing. Thank you, Lord. Have you done some of this today? Oh, glory. Hebrews 10, 35. Very, very, very familiar verse. Thank you. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Go, go back to that a minute. That's a good one. Go back. Hebrews chapter, Habakkuk. Go back to Habakkuk quickly. Though the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit. I didn't know this. Though the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, the field shall you know me, the flock shall be cut off, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Next verse. 
Next verse. But it's Thor. Yet will I join the Lord my God. And I will glory the God of my salvation. Amen. This is the <laughs> this will not happen. Because if God will see to it, now he's speaking prophetically now. It could have happened in a harvest, a physical harvest, but this is not a physical harvest. This is a spiritual harvest. Yet will I rejoice, Lord, we join the God of my salvation. Amen. There will be a fig tree. There will be fruit in the store. There will be, all that will take place. Because it's God that's engineering now, not man. Hallelujah. Amen. We see the same point in Isaiah 35 verse 1. Quickly, we close. Isaiah 35 1. Pastor David preached it on, I think it was Wednesday, two Wednesdays ago. The wilderness and the solid place of his glad for them, them who, them us. Them, the fruit of the earth that is coming forth in this land of the rivers divide beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. And the desert shall rejoice and the blossom as the rose. Next verse. Glory be to God. Shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellence of our God. How? Upon you and I. Arise, shine. For thy light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you and shall be seen upon you. Next verse, quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Strength, now this is it. This is where we have to come in. Strengthen ye the weak hands. Confirm the feeble knees. Let's see what this says in Amplify. Strengthen ye, let's see what it says. Amplify quickly. <laughs> Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble and tottering knees. Those are your knees that are shaking. They're not shaking in Jesus' name. Don't worry about the times. God is in control. God, tell your neighbor, God is in control. You can be happy. You can rejoice. God is in control. His word will not fail because he never fails. Make firm the feeble and tottering knees. Next verse. Give me back. Go back to the KJV. KJV, quickly, and next verse. <laughs> and I, this is what I've come to say today, brother. Say to them that on a fearful heart, be not afraid. Be fear. Behold, your God will come with a vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. So what must you do? Close. Romans chapter 12, 12. Patient in hope. I'm sorry. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Simple. Using the blood, the word, all the things we are doing already. The blood, the word, the power of the spirit. Perfect holiness through tongues and travail. All these things we, we, we now double down. Amen? And then the Bible says, and I love this one. Okay, we also make our, keep our minds upon him. Amen? The Bible says, he keeps in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. Your mind is not wandering. You know? you know, so don't use your mind to start figuring out how God is going to do it. Just let your mind praise God. You don't have understanding that goes from eternity to eternity. Just praise God. It is well. Thank you. It is well. Thank you, Lord. It is well. Thank you, Lord. It is well. I was speaking with somebody this afternoon. I've been talking, I've been talking to her about, you know, keeping her faith in what God is doing. And there was a lot of doubt. Hey, how this? I said, you don't worry about all that. Just know that God that started this work, he will finish it. So I said, cause, I said, cause, she now called me and said, ah, Pastor Vigar, ah, he, he didn't get through. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, what do you expect? That he won't come through? That God is doing something, he won't finish it. That God has started the work and he will not complete it. To fear Forgive me, Sister Ruda. Not in this life. Keep your mind on him. He will keep you in perfect peace. And then, don't be offended. The Bible says, great peace have they which love thy law. Nothing will offend them. Nothing will offend you as you love God by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Using the blood, the word, and the spirit. Perfecting holiness. And then, in this time, the season, the 
And the springtime has come, and the turtle are singing over our land. Because you do not stop well doing, you will reap abundantly, and you will not faint, and God will manifest himself in you and through you. Beloved, the time has come. That's the word I bring today. Don't be weary in well-doing, for you will surely, surely, surely reap if you do not stop doing well. And the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's talk to the Lord. On the Air has been brought to you by Christ Life Ministries, the outreach arm of the Scripture Pastor Christian Center. You can be a part of this program by becoming a fifth partner with Christ Life Ministries. For details, contact Christ Life Ministries, number 12, Oshutoku Avenue, Bodija Ibadan. You can also download our weekly messages from our website, www.spcconline.org, while our email address is scripturepastor at spcconline.org. You're welcome to worship with us at the Scripture Pastor Christian Center Auditorium, Polytechnic Road, Songo Ibadan. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.